Hey everybody, people always ask me, Manny, what tools should I be using for my Amazon business? Well, this episode is brought to you by Helium10.com. These are the same tools I use to generate six figures per month with Amazon FBA. I get keyword research, product tracking, listing optimization, search term tracking, account monitoring, and a lot of other brand new money pulling tools that are gonna be released to Helium 10 members on a regular basis. If you're gonna grab any tools, check these out. Seriously, get a massive advantage with the tools that top sellers are using right now. Okay, and they're all in one place. Some tools and services will have a user cap, so get in there as quickly as you can. That's helium10.com, H-E-L-I-U-M 10.com. Warning, the following podcast has been classified as insanely lucrative. Listener discretion is advised. I was kind of blown away because there were a few SKUs that I mm-hmm. thought I was profitable on, and then when I looked, I'm like, oh my God, I'm you know, upside, upside down. down here. Yeah. yeah. Your attention, please, please. please, please, please. Listening to the AMPM podcast may cause recurring revenue streams and unfair unfair advantages over your competitors. Other side effects may include better wallets, fired bosses, and longer vacations. Listen at your own risk. Here's your host, seven-figure entrepreneur and online marketing madman, Manny Coates. Manny Coates. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host, and this is the show where we discuss how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show. Get it? AM, PM, podcast, morning and night. As a matter of fact, I was just messing around with one of those ceramic coated pans. I know it sounds really weird. I bought it on Amazon and they claim you don't have to use any oil of any kind for anything. And I thought it was too good to be true. So. While I was cooking some eggs without oil just to see what would happen, and it actually did work, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. This is part two of an interview that I did with Ryan Bredemeyer. He's one of the co-founders of Hello Profit. And in the first episode, if you haven't listened to that yet, you should go check it out. It was really awesome. He talked about some pretty ninja stuff. And basically, it was everything having to do with suppliers, how to communicate with them, how to negotiate with them to get better pricing, the difference between factories and trade companies and why a factory might not always be the best choice, um, and just a ton of other stuff. So definitely go check that out. And in this episode, we're going to uh, talk about his software or his service actually, um, Hello Profit, which I use, which I think is awesome. And the first 10 minutes or so of the podcast, we're going to be talking about a hijacker issue that he's run into that is just absolutely nuts. It's crazy. Um, and I'd love to get your guys' feedback on what you think is going on. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump in and I hope you enjoy. So one of the things that I also wanted to talk about was um, hijacking because you have a very interesting story about what happened to you. And I don't even know how to answer the question that you asked me. I, I, we talked about this off the podcast here. Um, and I was like, Hmm, good question. I don't know. Maybe you should talk about that briefly, and, and maybe maybe our listeners, somebody knows, and when we post it, uh, post this episode up, they can respond in our Facebook group. Tell okay. us about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a yeah a rather complicated, advanced sort of hijacking situation that I found myself in, um, and I believe uh, you know maybe you're not hijacked right now, or you don't have a terrible hijacking situation. I think this there might be something to this if you, you hear this thing out, because. Um, I, I know that there's, you know, just like there's an ASM course and there's this other course and the other next course of how to sell on Amazon, there's also courses, again, across the pond uh, teaching how to take advantage of, of all of these business models, okay? So there are definitely hijacking trainings, as it were, um, that are going on contemporaneously. So it may not be your situation now, but you might as well learn about it and be, you know, in a, in a good position of understanding uh, by the time that may happen to you, you know, if it does. Um, and hopefully it just never does. So the situation I've got, you know, we've got a general protocol. Okay, hijacker again, sure. The VA staff, they know to send the cease and desist letter. May or may not work. Usually it does. If it doesn't, uh, and they have over X, you know, five number of units in inventory, then um, we'll go, we'll place a test order and, you know, be able to then prove to Amazon, hey, this is a load of malarkey. It's, it's, it's counterfeit, fraudulent kind of stuff. This is not, these are knockoff products. So Amazon, please take care of this. And what do you know? Then they go away in the next couple of days. Amazon kicks them off. Um, so that's the general, you know, and then if, um, if they're, 
if, if that process takes a long time, sometimes I'll just buy them all out because I know that I'll be able to get that money back, even though it's generally an FBM um, seller such that they need to provide uh, return authorization. Um, all I have to do is let them know, hey, if you're not interested in returning, taking these products uh, back, then I'll just simply open an A to Z C claim. And like every time they just lay down and let you return it because that will, that will really crush them. Yeah. So uh, that, yeah, and it, actually they're usually sh like shipped from China or, you know, Taiwan or someplace. Uh, so they say don't even bother returning them. They don't want to pay for the return shipping, you know, because it's more than the cost of the item. Uh, so they just say throw it out. And I do, happily, and get my money back. So that's how we generally deal with it. So this is what happened. Uh, this time we had an FBA hijacker, which is, you know, a little bit more audacious even. And so, wow, okay, you have, it's not the first time, though. Went through the same steps, didn't, didn't respond to the cease and desist. Um, and they had 200 some in inventory. Like, wow, okay, wow. So I went and I, I bought one. No, um, I actually, actually, because they were winning the buy box, because they had an FBA offer, and they had undercut our price so badly, I went ahead and bought them all out. There's like 170 some of them. Man, I was mad at them. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was quite, quite a ding, you know. But I'm like, no problem. It's there's gonna be junk. I'll just return it like I always do. And FBA, it's even easier to return than FBM. And that gives you the buy box back immediately once you uh, bingo. Once you so buy that's them. Why, that's yeah. why I bought them out. So wait a couple of days, whatever. Uh, the huge boxes show up at my door. You know, to my dismay, when I open these boxes, they actually contain my authentic product, 176 of them. Hmm. I, I was bewildered. I, I opened it fully expecting to see, you know, the same kind of junk as I always do. It was the real deal. Uh, so now what? Um, I have, I just ordered my own product at retail price, you know, and, and a whole bunch of them, and I have no complaint to make about them, to Amazon at least, because they, I, I inspected them. This is like the real thing. How did they get them? Did they get them on a deal set? They made a bunch of accounts and got a whole bunch of them. I don't know. Did they um, did they buy you know Amazon uh, after you make those disposal orders? They sell that stuff out of, off at auction. Oftentimes, did they then you know package them up perfectly and and re hijack me with the FBA? Did they get with my supplier and somehow work a deal with them and get some of my inventory? I, I, when I confirmed that wasn't the case, um, I tend to believe my supplier I have a good relationship with them. So. You know, so where do I go? Meanwhile, um, I get an email from Amazon stating, "Hey, the uh, another seller who um, you know claims to be the owner of this brand uh, has provided uh, uh, some some trademark verification thing, saying stating that they're the true owners of this brand. So we're going to remove the brand registry from you and, and you know give it to them. What? Like this is my brand? I thought this thing up. You know? Yeah. I it went from bad to worse. Yeah, it's terrible. So, I mean, I have to believe that this is, like, this is a coordinated effort. This isn't like two random events happening to me. Um, like two bad dreams at once is like all part of the same thing. Anyway, so now I've got this kind of double whammy, like a legal thing where I'm trying to actually prove that I own this company. <laughs> uh, and, and, and meanwhile, Amazon is believing the, the other folks who the trademark was, uh, that was applied, it was, um, you know, they have a Chinese address. So I, have, there's, you know, I can't sue them. There's no jurisdiction over them. It's just so they've really thought this through well. So uh, and they've got even though their account is brand new and no sales history, and I have you know I've sold like hundreds thousands of units over multiple years. Uh, you know clearly they're the the real owners, right? Because they've clearly. they've they've provided a falsified tr a trademark document or something. It's just mm -hmm. it's absurd. So not exactly sure how to deal with this. There's multiple areas of uh, multiple problems, but I am open to any of you wonderful sellers out there <laughs> who would lend a helping hand. To a fellow seller and uh, and and figure out you know uh, methodically how we can stop this sort of thing or um, make it unattractive for them to do this sort of thing to us uh, and really really uh, together come up with some creative solution that we, all of us could implement um, as it comes up for us. Yeah, that's crazy. And and the the trademark is being filed here in the U.S. Right. And are you able to verify that it's actually in process? Yeah. Or you, yeah. You can go on the USPTO website and type in your mark name or whatever, and it comes up. Right, right, but so this is a legit. It's it's not a fraudulent certificate there or whatever that it is that they sent. This is this well, is something that's in the process of actually going through right now. Right, but it's not. You don't get a certificate until it's actually done. So shy of that, like they have nothing to. They have they have no legal grounds to stand on. Nothing of weight to prove that they own the company yet. Mm -hmm. What did they submit to to Amazon at this point? Well, surprisingly, that, that Amazon didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly, right. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, because uh, I'm surprised that they would send any kind of information to you if the other company cannot prove. Well, that they're, they're kind they're... of insulated by a whole ocean, right? And uh, well, what? Look, just make it on Photoshop, right? And send huh. it in, and boom, Amazon gives you brand registry. They they figured something out. You know, there's got to be some course yeah. out there, and they're teaching it, and this is happening. So we got to figure out. Like I sent a beautiful nine point letter. I mean, it was really worth reading or chiseling and it's nicely written. Uh, it was a huge letter to Amazon, like how I can prove that I'm the owner of this company. It's just mm-hmm. clear as day. I bought the website. Here's the receipt. I came up with the logo. Here's all the development concepts, you know, that I went through with my graphic designer. <laughs> you know, this logo that is, you know, whatever is being trademarked by some Chinese guy. Um, here's uh, all my sales history. Here are here's my name on the internet. Okay. Uh, with, with, you know, as a, as a LLC member of this company, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, there's no, it's just on and on. I had nine points demonstrating that I'm the owner of this thing and that the, the, the offending party couldn't possibly come up with that same evidence. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all automated, right? So well, nine times know. out of ten. No, but they got, they got a, a, some falsified document from them saying, hey, this is, the, this is the certificate. And in this checkbox, in this SOP over to Amazon, you know, somebody uh, saw the certificate and then they um, award it, you know, move the brand registry. That's like what somebody's supposed to do on like tier one of you know support, right? Yeah. So anyway, uh, now, <laughs> yeah. So, so so they have control of the listing completely. They can modify the images, the text, everything at this point. Is yeah, that right? for, as, as far as I know. Uh, fortunately, they have no real motivation to destroy the listing, right? They're trying to make money off of it. So mm. we have the same objective there. I, I don't know why they would go ahead and change it because it's, it's nicely written and done and all that stuff. But I don't, yeah, I mean, it's now, I need to fight to get it back. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, the fact that you actually inspected it thoroughly and know for a fact that it, it is your product. Um, mm. I think we're gonna, hope, maybe we can get some some of the, the specialists um, yeah. regarding hijacking, yeah. the legal side, trademark, uh, those people that are on our group mm-hmm. uh, to come on board and, and see what they can. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, I should yeah. say my, you know, my fault in all this, and you listeners have probably already thought about this. Um, I, I mentioned it only to many other, earlier when we were talking. I, I failed to get my logo trademarked, and um, I thought I had. I've got multiple ones out there. This one got caught somewhere in cyberspace, and it actually didn't make it through the process, and I wasn't aware. Okay, but it is my fault. I should have, you know, made sure my ducks were in a row, and this would have been a lot easier to deal with if I had the real trademark whatever, I could have sent it to Amazon, cleared up the brand registry thing probably quickly, and they wouldn't be able to then be tra- trying to trademark my, my own logo as they are uh, right now. It, you know, it wouldn't, they'd be stymied. So it's, it's kind of my fault, you know, but it's a good wake-up call for any of us who have been developing a good asset um, and haven't really thought about that whole legal element of things, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to get those boxes checked and go ahead and get your trademarks. That's crazy. Yeah, hijackers are a pain. It, it's uh, it's getting worse. So, you've been able to get, um, would you say? I mean, all of them off your listings except for this particular one at this point. Um, I mean, they're currently out, off because I bought them out. Uh, but I, I did return the inventory, so it's going to be getting reinventoried at some time here soon. Um, coming back to haunt you. Yeah. 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 But generally, yeah, I'm able to pretty effective getting them. I mean, the the system, the VAs take care of it usually. I never have to get involved. But. Okay. All right. Let's talk about um, your baby. Oh, Hello, right. Profit. Colby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I, I, it's something that I've, uh, I've spoken about on our group and I've, I've been wanting to Thanks. actually talk about it on a podcast because uh, before using your service, and when you think you're profitable, um, you know, you might not be because you're not factoring returns and, and right. a lot of other things. Oh so gosh, yeah. why don't you explain exactly what Hello Profit is and, uh, you know, just talk about whatever you want related to the Oh, thanks. To the thanks tool. for the opportunity. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, hey, as I started this whole thing, you know, uh, Nikisha Muhammad and I are the co-owners and co-creators of this thing. And Hello Profit is, was born out of our business need. Okay. So I'm really kind of proud of that element of it because it was um, it's something that 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 solved some uh, real pain points that I experienced first and then uh, you know well, not first among all of you but just like I really experienced that and then we developed this thing to you know swash those those, those uh, pain points and now finally uh, turn it into a product that is available uh, as a subscription so that other people can benefit from all of that uh, all that development as well so hello profit in a nutshell allows you to really understand 
really see clearly your profitability right now. It allows you to see your profitability as a, a your whole merchant account overall in an aggregate view, and it also allows you to see your profitability at a granular level, you know, per ASIN, per variation. You're able to see your real up-to-date, almost up-to-the-minute profitability for for every single product that you sell. That's a that's a quantum leap forward from you know where we were just you know half a year ago, um, not having a tool set like this. Um, now being able to see uh, truly, you know, taking into account all kinds of all kinds of things, like you mentioned, even you know your um, the refunds, like you take into account sponsored ad costs, you take into account your the the cost of promotions, which is which are weighty. Uh, it's it's very easy to underestimate the actual costs that are associated with giving away those hundred promo units or whatever it is. It's pretty mm-hmm. profound. So having that whole picture, having the whole thirty day view, the fifteen day view, the whatever day, the today view, and being able to see your true profitability on your each product and on your whole account really lets you know where you stand as a business person. So it, it's, a, it's been a fantastic tool for me and now it's a sluice. I mean, it's been amazing how this thing has grown. Um, people just flocking to be able to truly clearly see uh, the reality of their business is profitability for the first time. Yeah. I think the first time I used it, I was kind of blown away because there were a few SKUs that I uh-huh. thought I was profitable on. And then when I looked, I'm like, oh my God, I'm you know upside, upside down. down here. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what's, yeah. what's going on? And then I looked in there and it was uh, it was the refunds. It wasn't by a lot. I, you know, I was just a little okay. bit upside down. I'm like, I wasn't calculating my refunds. I'm like, eh, you know what? A few refunds here and there. Sure. Uh, doesn't really matter. And then the cool thing is that I didn't have this turned on at first. I didn't I didn't realize that it uh-huh. was even a, a feature set. But the, uh, the pay-per-click, the sponsored ads, oh, wow. right? Having it actually attribute the appropriate cost of each campaign to the ASIN, yeah, yeah which huge. is really cool. Especially when you've got, I mean, when you're really getting in there and you're becoming uh, real granular with your your spends, your pay per click. You might say, okay, well, I spent three hundred dollars today on this particular product niche, mm-hmm. right? But you have three products and you have like fifteen different campaigns or, or ad groups. Um, it just really breaks it down, and it's it's awesome. Now you can see everything very quickly. Well, thank yeah, I appreciate that. And you know, again, built it for myself first and Nikisha first because. We need that. Like, I need to be a. Uh, I need to be on top of my numbers. I got to mind the store. I say, right? You got to know what's going on and where yeah. you, where you're bleeding out because you know we have a tendency to work so hard developing the packaging and the logo, all this stuff, and you end up getting emotionally attached to products, which is a problem, <laughs> you know. And then because of that emotional attachment, we're 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 apt to give it a pass, you know, like allow it to to squeak by when eh, it's probably actually not doing that well. I wonder, I'm spending a lot on ads, I don't really. But if you could see the numbers, you know, with Stark right in your face, you'd know, hey, this is not a good business move to keep this thing alive. We gotta we gotta kill this thing off as much as, much as I loved it, you know, at one point. Um, and and that actually ends up you know, cleaning up. You know, cutting the fat and cleaning up your business so that you can just be more profitable for whatever your good ends are. Yeah, yeah. And um, you can export the data, right? Oh, you yeah. Want. Yeah, it's all your data. So um, go ahead is on just about every page. You can select ranges. You know, if it's lists of products or um, lists of conversion rates or you can smart search everywhere through the website and you can really granularly filter down to whatever kind of data you're interested in. And then um, perhaps it's um, only your customers who have ordered this one product uh, multiple times, sure. You can filter for that, and uh, and now you can export that or anything else around the website. If you export that, though, um, you know you can collect their uh, phone numbers, upload that to Facebook, and you know put a little campaign out there thanking them or asking them for reviews or telling about your new product. Or just mm-hmm. a zillion different ways you can leverage this data. Cool, cool. Are there any um, outside of the typical usage of of Hello Profit? Are there any strategies or tactics you would recommend that you think are pretty cool? Yeah, uh, that one. <laughs> I think it's really underutilized. But the, you brought up a good point. This whole exports thing. Um, you know, there's there's a uh, man. There's a ton of data you can pull out out there since like January 2014 or something. Just a, a crazy amount of. Uh, you can go back in history. So uh, yeah, that whole thing about uh, smart searching and filtering out for certain products. I, I love that myself. And then you can you know build uh, Facebook campaigns really easily around those things to to bring them back. Um, or maybe just the people that um, maybe you know that that your certain product you don't you don't have subscribe and save maybe, but you know that your product is consumable, and maybe it's been three to six months the, the lifespan of the, the bottle or whatever you have. Uh, you can export those people who bought your product that product that time ago, and then shoot them an ad or however you want to contact them, 
-hmm. and, and let them know, hey, this is probably, you're probably running out right now. And <laughs> they'll be like, or maybe build a landing page, drive them there, and you can have your way with them. Exactly. Nice. Pay-per-click, um, when I'm looking on, on uh, when I go into Seller Central and I look at it, it's it usually doesn't update, at least for me, until about 2 p.m. Mm. Uh, for, for the previous day. Yeah. You're, does Is it the same thing for your system? Does it have to wait for that to update, or, or is it getting okay. stuff more real time? Great question. Um, so, yeah, the, the actual, the ad spend, um, that is not available, actually, uh, from Amazon at all until the next day. Usually it's the morning, though, not 2 p.m. I don't know what's going on in your account there. But yeah, at, least, weird. And at least in HP, because of maybe it's the way that Nikisha was able to, to work it out with the API, she gets that data pretty early. Certainly by the time I'm looking at it, it's there for yesterday in the morning. So you guys are lucky. Yeah, I, I swear to God, it's like one o'clock to two o'clock typically every day is when it'll be zero 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 on everything on ACOS and then in okay. updates. So that's mm. very strange. Okay, but that's that's good to know. So it's the next day. So mm -hmm. is it better to always pull a report using yesterday and not the current? Well, day's yeah. Metrics? I mean, it, look, if you're in the if you got your your business hat on where you're trying to like figure out where you're gonna cut the fat, you know, and you're gonna. Uh, Im improve profitability overall in your company, you're not going to be looking at today's data. You're going to be looking right at like a longer term, like the last 30 days, 90 days or something. So uh, yeah, you can exclude today is probably the best thing to do because that's, you know, you'll get the most accurate data averaged over those days because today is not going to have the sponsored ad data yet. It's just not available. Like the ad spend isn't completed yet. So it, Amazon can't even report it yet. Right. So um, you got to wait till tomorrow for that. But, so, but if you got that optimization hat on, yeah, you're going to be wanting to look at multiple days in, into the past anyways, right? So um, you don't really need um, today's data for that. Yeah. Um, any uh, Anything you want to talk about in terms of upcoming features? Anything you guys have oh, been man. working on? Well, yeah, there's a ton. But um, I mean, like, well, this isn't, this is a, a current, I mean, promotions is a huge thing. You know, being able to see promotional data in near real time has been one of our, you know, key things people love. For a long time, because Amazon's so frustrating the way, but uh, the way that they've been uh, handling that forever. So that was one of my pain points. Um, but yeah, there's some really neat stuff coming up. Um, uh, working on uh, like a sponsored ads module to you know help people see um, and kind of optimize their ads a little bit better. There's I know a lot of, a lot of folks are kind of in that space. Um, hey, well, I welcome the competition. It's great. We all get you know better for it. And uh, better products out there for for you know ever, ever, all the sellers. So um, there's that coming up. Uh, I know internally, you know, we've been able to save I don't know, something like a third of our ad spend monthly without sacrificing any sales, just from like some of the like simple uh, like our little internal algorithm we're working on for uh, for that optimization of sponsored ads. So we could save really a ton. Uh, every month without sacrificing any of the sales from those ads. So that was that's really exciting. Um, that, I mean, that pays off your hell of profit expense like a zillion times over every month. Yeah. When um, is that going to be available? Oh, gosh. Don't ask me that question. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know how it is with software, right? You say, okay, it's going to sure. be two weeks and it's like three months later. Yeah, it's going to be out yesterday. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it Nikisha that's programming the whole thing or well, do you guys have a team? Oh, we have a team. It's quite a substantial team now, but um, you know, okay. she's, she's more of an oversight role and being able to, I mean, she does the, the most difficult parts, whatever that is, because mm -hmm. she's just, I mean, there isn't a lot of Nikishas in the world. Uh, not, not any that I know. Uh, <laughs> and so... Okay, so we got that coming up, and we also have um, we're working on similarly uh, without a timeline for you. Sorry, a uh, kind of an inventory module because that's been another pain point in our businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everybody has a different business model, so it's really t difficult to build an inventory tool to satisfy everybody's needs. But we're going to start with what we do and what I think a lot of people do in terms of private labeling. Um, and but you know, the, there's these realities of um, variable costs. Uh, you know, inventory orders over time, variable importing costs or shipping costs that changes over time. There's seasonality factors, right? There's, um, oh my gosh, there's a whole host. Of, there's, there's like, when do you get paid out from Amazon? That actually directly affects when and how much inventory you might be able to purchase, right? Unless you happen to be independently wealthy and just sit on a load of cash, mm -hmm. right? So there's all kinds of a lead time from the suppliers. Uh, you know, their seasons, their, can, uh, their um, what do you call it? Uh, Chinese New Year. So there's just so many different factors to build into a smart algorithm, um, which to help you, you know, predict when and how much inventory to purchase so that you don't run out of inventory, which is like one of the most costly things selling on Amazon, right? So um, it's very, it's very complex math. So yeah. uh, we're working on, um, you know, building one of those up, and you know, that's has you know enough 
customizable ranges of things so that you know the end user can if they have a different business model might could make good use of it still yeah that's all awesome stuff yeah and you know what like i said earlier uh, guys if you if you haven't tried this um you actually I mean, you owe it to yourself. It's going to save you so much time. And, and really, like Ryan just mentioned, it's going to demystify everything, right? It's going to open up all the numbers and you're going to oh be gosh. probably surprised, right? You're going to look at this and go, holy crap, I wasn't aware that, I thought I was making 50% profit. You right. hear people say that all the time. And oh you're my like, gosh. I'm always like, really? 50%? Really, really, tell me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's fantastic. We get all we get those kind of inquiries all the time. Like we really think HP is broken. <laughs> 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 okay, and we... It it's passion. broken. You know, let's take your time and let's look it over. But yeah. you know, in fact, it's the business model. You know, or the, the that's broken. So yeah. Um. Hey, but you know what? It's a tough day. But then they realize it and they can open their eyes, cut the fat, and turn the business around and really mm -hmm. make something out of it. Think of like how much better. I, I love thinking about how much better off all these businesses are for being able to know the truth about where they stand. Um. Yeah. That, that's deeply fulfilling to me. I think that's it's really exciting. Absolutely. And it's fast, guys. I mean, you go in there and you're within, uh, you know, a handful of minutes, you're setting up these things. It's, and it's pretty cool to, it, you know, to see the results pop up. And you got those colorful graphs and everything. Uh, yeah, makes it very easy to see. she's amazing front end as well as back end developer. Yeah, it's good stuff. So um, we are going to have a, a special link. I'll talk about it at the end of the podcast episode uh, where you can go to actually get a special deal um, oh, yeah. that Ryan and Akisha set up. Yeah. And a dollar trial, too. So there's, you know, it's great to just try it out yep, for, for like sure. 23 weeks, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we've been at this for a while, Ryan. Anything else you want to add? That will um, do no. it. <laughs> that will do Thank it. All so right. Kindly, really appreciate the opportunity. Really love what you guys are doing. Uh, keep it up, and hats off to all you sellers. Yeah, keep plugging. Take the risk, and uh, see you on the inside. Yeah, it was my pleasure, Ryan. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to have you uh, back on. Thank you, Manny. Thanks, Ryan. Bye Take now. care. So there you have it, guys. What an awesome interview. If you have any suggestions on the topic of the hijackers at the beginning of this podcast. You think you know what happened or how to resolve the issue or solve it or just help Ryan out in any way, please go to the FBA High Rollers group. Okay, that's our Amazon, sorry, that's our Facebook group. It's called the Amazon FBA High Rollers. And uh, tag me in there, tag Ryan as well, and just post uh, what your thoughts are on this. And in regards to Hello Profit, Okay, it's awesome. You heard everything about it. And uh, it's a tool that I use daily. I don't use a lot of tools outside of the Helium 10 tools that we develop ourselves here. So in terms of other tools, this is one that I use daily. It's always, always loaded up in one of my tabs on my browser. I just have it there um, because I use it that much. So I just click over, check my profits for the previous day. I look to see if there's anything weird. I can see at a glance everything right I can see how many returns I've had the whole nine yards and I don't have to jump around between all the Amazon screens and things are just buried and and not real time uh, unless you go into other specific screens so hello profit shows everything right there shows you at a glance if you're profitable if you're not profitable what your ROI is your margins right um, I mean everything it's just really cool if you're wondering about the price they have it at $297 per month normally uh, but it's $97 per month right now and if you actually get it through our website through a special link that we've created over at ampmpodcast.com and you click on our tools section in the top right you'll get a special discount it's a discount for our listeners of the podcast and I believe it's about $20 off per month uh, just by clicking through that link. Nothing else changes. So our gift to you, if you'd like to use it, I will get a small commission if you actually buy through that link though. So your choice, whether you want to do that or not and support the podcast. Otherwise, do whatever you think is best. But yeah, anyways, that's all set up for you guys. And that's it for this episode. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. I thought it was really interesting. And um, again, I'm not gonna promote stuff ever to you guys unless I think it's good or unless I'm actually using it myself. So Hello Profit, can't recommend it enough. It's really cool. And with that said, I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care. You've been listening to the AM PM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider, insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.